Good evening, El Paso. I hope everybody's doing well, and I'm very excited to be here coming to you via recording. Um, my name is Daniel Sable. I am a school media specialist and a technology expert. Um, but what I'm here today to talk about is something a little different, and that is how to reach students who seem to be unreachable. Um, this is a real problem um, that I've experienced as I work in a variety of urban school districts. Um, and I see a number of students who come from homes uh, with different um, backgrounds and different um, cultures and so forth. Um, a lot of times students will come to school with the same ideas and the same thoughts that um, they have at home. And you'll see a lot of times that these students, they, they appear to be unreachable um, or depressed or not happy or uh, whatever it may be. So over my many years of working, um, not only as a school media specialist, but as a um, professor of computer science, um, I've looked at the faces of thousands of students and what I've realized is it's pretty easy to pick up on a sad face of a student. It's pretty easy to pick up on a student who's introverted, who seems that they are unreachable, that they are um, only there in school to do their work and to barely get by and to just kind of float throughout the day, possibly with friends or without friends. But whatever the case may be, um, they are um, the ones who are classified or who is who stick out kind of as the unreachable students. And um, this is very untrue. Um, what I want everybody to do is really take a second to think um, about this idea of a student being unreachable. And ask yourself, um, is this actually true? Are students unreachable? Uh, what I do here is I hear a lot of negativity, a lot of um, other professionals in my field, academics, um, colleagues, and so forth, um, always pointing out the negativity in the student. And they're always saying the student is um, this, the student is that, the student is unreachable, the student can't do this, the student can't do that. And the students are kind of shoot off and they're put away and that's it. And they're given up on. Um, the thing that I have found to be the greatest strategy for reaching these students and the most important strategy was changing the mindsets of teachers and colleagues to not talk about the bad of these students. Find the good. Look for the good in these students. There is excellence in every student, and every student has their own little niche that you need to find. It's just a matter of finding it. For instance, um, I had a student, um, we'll call him Joshua, who was a student who seems to be very unreachable, very cut off. He did come from a home that was um, destructive, um, a lot of different uh, legal issues and so forth. Um, but I did learn that the young man loved um, robotics. And so what I realized is that when he was around STEM and I was working with him and he was working with me, he and I began to build trust and gain trust and work on the robotics program. Um, after a while, he began to open up. He began to open up to me. He began to become um, very mild-mannered. And after a couple of months or maybe a little bit more, um, he became a student who was absolutely lovely and integrated very nicely into the school system. Uh, now, how did that happen? Well, I took the time to actually sit and listen to him. I did realize that he had problems um, going on, and I knew that, but I wouldn't talk about the problems he had going on because, you know, you don't really want to rub salt on a wound, so to speak. 
But if he wanted to tell me something, then that would be okay. Um, I did have some boundaries, obviously, that I wouldn't cross, but there generally was never any issues with that. Um, but the, the biggest thing was relating to the student and being open-minded. Being able to tell myself, okay, this is a young man who is going through a struggle presently. Um, he may have been going through the struggle for the last five years. Maybe his parents are getting divorced. Maybe uh, a loved one, uh, he lost you know, a loved one in his family. Maybe the, his girlfriend broke up with him. There could be a variety of reasons why this student has been put into this sort of hole. And so you notice them, you talk to them, you get to build the rapport with them, and then you find that little niche that they love. And there's always something. So like I said, my student Joshua loved robotics. So what we did was is we uh, rearranged his schedule so he could spend more time with me in our um, collaborative or STEM or stream lab. Um, building robots and while we were building robots we were also developing a trustworthy relationship which allowed us to grow and to develop outside of the classroom in the hallways of the school i became a medium for him or an outlet for when he was having a problem with a student or an issue with his girlfriend or another teacher he was always able to come to me and speak to me and I then was able to go and speak to the teacher and act as almost a medium between Joshua and the teacher or Joshua and um, whatever the case may be in the guidance counselor um, if there was problems going on with the teacher or problems um, that they were expressing at home and then they, we could all work together to come through a resolution to help the student. Um, so. Um, that's a little bit about how I sort of developed this idea of reaching the unreachable. Um, you know, looking for that student who is, you know, drifted, who has drifted off and who's kind of blocked off from the population. Now, um, I did speak a little bit about how I developed um, my relationship with him, but let me do... Um, cover some other things I'd like to say. Um, so the first thing is this. Um, you really need to have a good eye for um, looking at students and being able to determine which student is that student that's in a hole and that's really the um, unreachable and which student is that that's having a bad day. Um, there have been times while I was working in the library that I've seen students sitting there crying. And so I would approach them and I would sit and then we would begin to talk. And we would begin to talk about the situation and little by little, um, <clears throat> we would sort of get to the root of the problem. And then I would take the student to guidance and then they would take care of the problem from there because I am not a trained um, psychologist, <laughs> psychiatrist, or any other um, uh, professional of that nature in healthcare. So I did my duty and my due diligence by not allowing the student to sit there looking sad, but by actually approaching them and being able to build a little bit of rapport and talk to them. You know, you just need to really um, use your interpersonal skills the, in the best way you can and even the toughest of students the students that that seem to be um, those that are in gangs or those that are um, they could be a little bit intimidating even students like that are extremely approachable and they all have problems that we can help solve it's a matter of us reaching them by approaching them in a subtle manner that basically says to the student, I'm here to help you. I'm here for you. I'm your friend. I'm not your enemy. Although I'm not, I'm not somebody who's going to um, do all sorts of crazy things, but 
I'm your friend. I'm here to listen. I'm here to try to resolve issues for you if I can. And basically to um, help become a medium between the student and school so the student has a much better day. Um, now there are a variety of um, thought and thoughts and, and ideas and um, different theoretical approaches to um, this type of an, uh, subject. Um, again, the, the best way that I have found um, is just directly approaching the student, introducing yourself, telling them who you are, what you are, what you do, telling them what you enjoy doing, and seeing if you can find some type of a hook that can catch them um, and interest them. Now, if you can't, maybe you can find something that you know one of your colleagues can catch them with with a hook. Like I was saying before, I got lucky with my one student, which was the robotics program. You may have a colleague um, who's a mathematician or a physicist or whatever, can build bridges or can do whatever, and you can refer the student to your colleague and let them develop a relationship and become reachable based upon a relationship that you have built. So you always got to remember, as I said earlier, you want to make sure that your colleagues um, are not talking negatively. They're always in the positive. They're always looking for a positive spin on a student, not uh, Joey showed up to class and he didn't do nothing today. Um, it was, you know, horrific having him in a class. You want to look for that positive thing. Like Joey showed up today and uh, I actually saw he was a little bit happy and I was able to work a little bit with him and get him somewhat interested in the subject. Um, and he learned a little bit. He maybe participated in um, some of the group activity that you had in your classroom or something. Um, always keep that positive focus, positive um, nature, and you will definitely find that you will see an improvement not only in your students, but in yourself. Um, this is uh, a thing, a second thing that I see is um, since we've passed COVID and since we or are still going through COVID, um, a thing that I have realized is that a lot of people are leaving schools now. We're losing a lot of excellent teachers. We're losing a lot of just different people who um, were there for the students and for the babies and for the kids and loved them. But they feel that COVID was enough to um, have them leave because they had enough time and so forth with their job. So they left. Um, this could be actually a good thing, believe it or not. Getting fresh, um, new, young blood into schools is not a bad thing. Um, yes, we want to keep teachers who are very talented. We always want that. We don't want to lose anybody. But if it does happen to happen and you do get the new blood that comes into the school, they tend to relate a little bit better to the younger generation than the older generation does. Um, with that being said, making connections, um, understanding the students, understanding their, that their likes, their needs, their wants, their desires, um, they're able to make even better connections. Um, there may be times where you have to um, take one for the team and take a student to, like I said, a colleague who may be young or younger than you who can relate better to the student and really um, drive it home for the student to make the student stand out and become the student that is no longer the untouchable, so to speak. Um, with that all being said, I think that um, I want to just reiterate that it's important that you remember to approach your students, um, especially when you see that they're sad because we have our eyes, we have our vision, so we can use that to really um, tell if a student is hurting um, emotionally or whatever by a look on the face or 
by somebody who shut down or whatever the case may be. And it's very easy um, as support professionals, myself being a librarian, to go up to a student and say, hi, my name is Dan, or my name is Mr. Siebel, or my name is whatever. And, you know, do you mind if I sit here and talk for a couple of minutes with you? Um, that will just break the rapport right away. The student will see that somebody's actually watching and looking and paying attention to them and actually cares about their well-being. Um, so that definitely helps. You get to learn more about the student. You learn more about what their little like or dislikes are. And then you can take it from, take it from there and either have your own um, way of building a relationship or pass them off on colleagues who have you know particular things that they may be interested in like again if you're a math teacher and you happen to see a student who you feel is unreachable but you know the student loves to read you can pass that student on to the librarian if you're a librarian and you know a student loves robotics you can pass this student on to the stream teacher in the school and see if you could help rearrange your scheduler or um, do some do some uh, rearranging um, to help them have more time with the person to help develop the the um, the core need that has to be there for a relationship to build and for the student to grow. Um, lastly, um, is don't give up. You don't want to give up because it may not work on the first or second or third or fourth try you're approaching a student. A student could be so shut down that they just, they've become so used to not being reachable and not being talked to and not being liked that they have turned to, um, you know, cutting themselves off from speaking to other people, from speaking to their teachers, from speaking to anybody. They come into class, they do their quick thing, they go home. And that's where they stay locked in their bedroom at night on a video game or something, which is not all bad and not, which is not all good either. Um, we are all social beings and we need to really make sure that we are um, helping students become expressive with the idea of um, using their own um feelings and their own thoughts and their own um, ways of doing things as opposed to having them lock themselves in their room with an iPad and letting a video game dictate what they do all night. Um, and that also develops and helps shut people off more because they figure that their their family, their home, their, um, their life is a virtual one. It's not in reality. And so we sometimes have to pull back on that a little bit. Um, but that is something that is almost impossible to do, to do now because we have uh, so much technology. But you can definitely um, reach students in so many different ways. And uh, another big one is having gaming in schools. I've developed um, gaming in, in, in one of my schools in a lab. Uh, where we actually had built out a whole space for um, car racing, for um, uh, Minecraft, for all these different things that were both educational, but also the kids found them fun. We had, we had bought a, um, a very large TV. We had spent a little bit of money and it actually went to good use. We got a grant and um, you know from there it took off. The students were able to find um, joy and happiness. And so we connected the technology to the student. And then we connected the student to other students who were, had the same interests and also were cut off. And we allowed them to build relationships. Okay, so it wasn't always playing the video game. Sometimes we'd be doing other things like for instance, a book talk or a book circle. If the students wanted to play this video game, they had to participate in maybe one book discussion per month or one book discussion per uh, uh, per per um, every quarter. 
or every three months, um, which help the student then develop friends and um, begin breaking out of that shell of being untouchable, um, unwantable, and becoming more um, of a student who is going to grow, flourish, and develop into a much more um, relaxed and a much more um, uh, approachable person as time goes on, as they get through high school and into college and then out into the work world. You know, we want to be the one that they look back on and say, well, hey, uh, Mr. Sable uh, was the one actually who, you know, was able to reach me. Okay. And he was able to develop this relationship with me and able to teach me about robotics. And now I'm going to Boston University to take their engineering program and um, they're a new or different student because of their ability to um, break that shell and our ability to find them um, as the unreachable ones and to realize that um, we can help them. And so I'm up here in New York. It's raining out like cats and dogs. Everybody is down in El Paso. I hope that everybody down there is enjoying their time and having a great day. Um, you can always email me if you have any questions about this uh, at Sable, S-A-B-O-L, Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L, zero, at gmail.com. Or you can call me at 914-564-2505, which is my cell direct cell number, um, because I'm always looking forward to help out in any capacity, any way I can, um, a district or a teacher or whomever who's having difficulties connecting with students um, in their role. And it happens to all of us. We all have the one student or two students or 20 students that we just can't connect with. And there is there are ways to overcome that. And the biggest one is to be approachable, to drop your biases about them, to um, forget all the negatives and only see the positives and keep reminding yourself about all the positives and look for them in the students and show them that you truly care. That's the biggest one. When they see you truly care, um, they know that they can come to you for help and they know that they um, have somebody who loves them and will um, help them and they can trust. So, All right, everybody, enjoy the conference. Enjoy your day. Uh, I hope to hear from you. And um, thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye.